morning, we know uh, as we, as our brother read this morning, uh, we, we understand pretty clearly that God, He wants us to be uh, charitable. He wants us to share uh, the blessings that we do have. And, and I wanted to talk about benevolence because sometimes it is, it, it's hard when you're out there. You know, you, you, you go, for example, you go, uh, this happened to me many times, I go through Walmart, <laughs> and I, I'll see this guy in, in, in the, at the light, pretty sure you guys have seen him too, with a sign saying, please help me, I'm hungry, and he weighs about 200 pounds. So that, that, that kind of, you know, makes you think. It's just, this is the flesh, okay? It makes you think, it makes you doubt. I mean, is this a con artist? Is this, is, is this for real? I mean, I always wonder, I always wonder why? I don't understand. So I want to stop and, and, and just invite him somewhere, but I'm, then I, you know, fear takes over, which is a, it's dangerous, you know, when you let fear take over your, your life and your feelings and so forth. But, you know, it's confusing. And, 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 you know, we think about was it brought by their own foolishness? Was it Earth's fault? Was it somebody else's fault? I mean, there's so many things that we think, you know, we think about the government. Government has so many programs. Why are you hungry? So, so we, we, you know, we, our mind just goes 100 miles an hour, if you will, uh, and sometimes that may probably makes us not take a step and help and so forth, and we might think, you know, shouldn't the church take care of it? I mean, that's, that's something that goes to our minds as well. I don't know if you guys wonder, but why are we taking two collections today? Yeah, you probably wonder. But we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what the church, um, us as church, uh, supposed to do in this world and, and what are we supposed to do as individuals because uh, there is a little different. There's a little difference and, and unfortunately some, some people might not think the same way but we do have clear examples and, and we'll, we'll look at those really quick. We'll look at the short term mission of the church and we'll look at the long term and then we'll look at our, our responsibilities. But when we think about the short term, if you go back to the book of uh, Acts, for example, in chapter 11, there's a, a guy there and he prophesied. Uh, I'll read that real quick. Uh, I'm trying to keep, like I said, I'm trying to keep my message short, so I'll do my best, okay? So, but it was, it was Acts, Acts chapter 11, verse 27. And we'll read about verse 30. It says, And in these days prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Uh, then one of them, named Agabus, stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the, in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea, this also, this they also did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Paul and Barnabas. So oh, here we start. We, we can see that there was something going on big, something that just came up, and it was going to happen. Disaster, for example, famine. In this case, and we're talking about short term right now. So these funds were collected by the congregation, and you can see that in First Corinthians chapter 16. Uh, in verses 1 through 4, Paul talks about that. Eh? But when you read those chapters, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 16, you re read 2 Corinthians chapter 8, that's a, a ch chapter 8, 9, and, and so forth, talks a lot about this, this event and this collection that was taken. And if you read those chapters in Corinthians, uh, 1 and 2 Corinthians, you'll see that the members gave, they gave generously to the people and cheerfully. And Paul exhorted him to, to always have a cheerful heart when you do give, uh, not only for the collections every Sunday, but when there's a special need for the brethren. And, and, and you, you, know, you notice that all of this was for the brethren, for all the people um, that had needs. And we talked about that in, the, in, the, in our Bible study this morning, but this happened within the church. So we as church need to be ready. I mean, nobody here should ever have any kind of need. If, we are, if we're together, if we're joined as a church, and I'm saying need, and I know Gordon, Gordon made that pretty clear this morning, there's a difference between a need and a want. Way different. 
needs are three simple things, very simple. It's shelter, food, and clothing. Shelter involves, that's pretty much, it's a general term, so it involves a lot of stuff. Now, shelter, you need heat, you need, you know, you need heat. I, I won't say you need AC, but I, I know you need heat, because you can't do it with heat. You can, you can sleep without AC, but you can do it without, without heat. That would be uh, troubling. But there's, there's shelter, food, and clothing. Those are ma basically the needs that we all need to survive. That's just basic needs. So it should be, none of you guys should be scared. And, and if something happened to us, we should count on other churches as well. Because it's not only for us. We should be ready to help, of course, our family here. But our family is very big. It expands all over the world, whatever the Church of Christ meets. So we should be ready to help anybody in any other Church of Christ, not only in Connecticut, but anywhere in the world. Uh, so that's, that's kind of like a short term. And like I said, I, I have more passages. And, and you know, when, when you look at what the Christians here were doing for Jerusalem, the Jerusalem had the famine. There were many Christians that were not Jews. They were Gentiles in uh, Macedonia, Achaia. There was all the congregations that were willing to do it. They were, they were cheerfully given. And, and Paul says that, you know, it was kind of like, Kind of like a repayment, if you will, Paul said in Romans chapter 15, verses 25 and 27. Kind of because where did, where did, the, did the word of God, the church, came from? Where did it begin? In Jerusalem. So we are partakers of all the spiritual blessings that came from the Jews. Came right out of Jerusalem. And all these people were able to hear the word because the people in Jerusalem sent the preachers out. In their own expense, not only in their own expense, but the word came from them. So it was a blessing that we experienced as Gentiles, non-Jews. So it was kind of like a repayment that Paul uh, said that they're doing. Now, when you when you <coughs> when you think about the characteristics of this um, famine or this emergency, it was it was truly severe. It was a severe need that needed to happen. And there was a special collection that was taken, and it lasted a couple of, like almost a year. And actually, it was taken in a special group. People took it and distributed according to to the, you know, the churches and the elders and so forth. And and, and you know, it it was for the benefit of all the Christians, as I said, our brothers and sisters. Now, we they made sure the funds arrived safely, and they took they took their um, you know, everything they needed to take or the actions and the precautions. To, to make sure the funds arrive and safely and so forth. Now, we, we can talk about, this is not, we can talk about short term, but it's all, also, we as church, we have a long term, if you will, um, to take care of, of, for example, orphans and widows. Remember what uh, James says, right? But widows, for example, widows, Paul gave a, a really a specific instructions for widows, and that's, we're going to read that real quick, because that one has to definitely be, be uh, read, but, but when you look at the book of Acts from the beginning, when the church started, you know, they, they believers sold all the excess, they have houses, you don't, don't think that, because some people will, will go this route, but don't think they sold their houses to give it to all the people, that's not what they did, because then they wouldn't be providing for their own family, they, people have houses and properties and things like that, that's what they sold, all the excess that they had to share with the people that didn't have, so, so it was an equality is what we learned. In the New Testament, you can go to Acts chapter 2, and you'll see that, Acts chapter 4. And we know that the local congregation handled uh, handle the, the distribution, if you will, of all these funds. And, and, of course, you go to Acts chapter 6, and you'll see that they chose uh, deacons or ministers to, to efficiently distribute this, this, um, this funds. Because the apostles said, are we going to sacrifice the preaching of the word and the prayer, or are we going to serve the table? So they chose men, like we were talking about this uh, in the morning as well, how Moses, you know, he, he felt overwhelmed because he had all this burden on his shoulder, but then God said, you know what, select 70 men, and we'll, we'll divide, we'll give you, you know, we'll give, that's in Numbers, by the way, if you don't know, Numbers chapter 11, we'll see, that's what we're studying, troubles in Numbers in the morning, but... That's, that's what happened here. They selected, there was too much of the apostles that realized we can't, we can't do it. It's too much. And some widows were being neglected. And they, they were complaining. People were complaining. We talked about that too, you know. Should be no complaining. But it's just human, human nature. 
And uh, you remember what I said about human nature, you know, when it's only natural, that's what's wrong with it, right? But uh, they selected those people, and, and that's the first time in Acts chapter 6, is the first time when they complain about the widows being neglected, some of the widows, the Hellenistic widow, uh, those are the people that were... Um, uh, Jews that spoke the Greek language, they were complaining that the Jews were, you know, kind of forsaking their widows. So there was a little complaint there, but details are given all the way to, uh, to first, in First Timothy, and we'll, we'll read that one because that's important. Uh, we're talking about long-term responsibilities of the church. We as a church have responsibilities, and we do have, as individuals, we'll have responsibilities as well. But look at First Timothy chapter 5, uh, and this is very important. First Timothy, because this is Paul talking to a young preacher on how to instruct the church or the churches, wherever he went. Uh, so he says in, in First Timothy chapter 5, and we're going to read verse 3, maybe all the way through verse 16 or so. And it says, he tells Timothy, he's instructing Timothy, honor widows who are really widows. He says, but if any widows has children or, or grandchildren, let them first learn to show piety at home and to repay their parents. Now you can start hearing that not only we have responsibility as a church, but we do have responsibilities as individuals. Okay? Then he says, now, she who is, a, who is a, really a widow and left alone, trusts in God and continues in supplications and prayers night and day. But she who lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. And these things command that they may be blameless. But if anyone does not provide for his own, that's what I mentioned earlier, this verse 8. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Do not let a widow under 60 years old be taken into the number and not unless she has been the wife of one man, well reported of good works, if she has brought up children, if she has lodged strangers, if she has washed the, the saints' feet, and if she has relieved the afflicted, if she has diligently followed every good work, basically a good widow Christian. That's what he's describing there. But refuse the younger widows, for when they have begun to grow wanton against Christ, they desire to marry, having condemnation because they have cast off their first faith. And besides, they learn to be idols, wandering about from house to house, and not only idol, but also gossips and busy bodies, saying things which they ought not to. Therefore, I desire that the younger widows marry, bear children, manage their house, give no opportunity to the adversary to speak reproachfully, reproachfully for some have already turned aside after Satan if any believing man or woman has widows let them relieve them and do not let the church be burdened that it may relieve those who who are really widows so here here we have a pretty strange case but it's very specific you only have the word orphan in the New Testament once and that is in James chapter 1 and we'll, we'll read that verse in a minute here. But, you know, we, we, Paul is very clear about the widows that the church is supposed to take care of. And very clear about the widows that individuals, children and grandchildren, are to take care of. That kind of tells you, that gives you an idea that, that we, as church, have responsibilities and as individuals as well. We are to provide for our family as well. You know, we're not, you don't want to expect the church to, you know provide for your family unless we of course are in need so we have different different things that we have now you know it's good to understand that a, a faithful Christian is it's um, to be a good example to to, to do this and, and, and to take care of people that need and so forth but the tragedy the problem is that charity often stops right here you know people Believing the church, believing that giving to the church, it's, uh, it basically relieves ourselves from other responsibility. That's what the problem starts. That's where we can get into issues. You know, when we give to the church, we know as a church that we do have a mission. We have a mission. We know what it is. 
to take care of each other. Now, when, when we really have needs to take care of the widows that can't can help that, you know, can really need it. If we have orphans, I mean, uh, that's, we, we have the opportunity to do that, of course, we'll be, we'll be pleased. But we can't take care of every orphan in the world. We have no, we don't have those means. But it's, uh, you know, the church, the church's funds, if you will, they, they, they restrict it by two specific situations. You know, but us as individuals, we don't really have that restriction. Uh, and, you, you know, you, you, we can't pass off our responsibility of, or, or we become less than what? Remember the, uh, the Pharisees and the, uh, the scribes? They came to Christ and, and, and they were criticizing the disciples, telling the disciples, why should disciples eating, you know, uh, violating the elders' tradition by eating with their hands defiles or dirty? You know, and Christ tell them, that's in Mark 6, 7, by the way. Uh, I read that little um, little piece there for you, and uh, they they tell the disciples, you know, why are your disciples not walking according to the tradition of the elders, uh, but they eat bread with the unwashed hands? And he answered Christ and said to them, Well, well, did I say I prophesied of you hypocrites? And that's for for those of us that think that Christ wasn't straight enough. You know, he was all accepting, all loving. No, he tell them, you hypocrites. That's why. Um, well enough, the pro uh, I say I prophesy, but it's written, he said, the people honor honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, the washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do. And he said to them, all too well re you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your traditions. For Moses said, Honor your father and mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, If a man says to his father or mother, Whatever prophets you might have received from me is Corban, meaning that is, is a gift to God, and basically explain this right there. Then you no longer let him do anything for his father or his mother, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down, and many such things that you do. So that's, that's what we have to be really careful not to think that, you know, let the church take care of it. That we, we as individuals do have responsibilities and, uh, and we, of course, we can't, we can't run from them. So some people also mistakenly believe that uh, the church is, is, uh, is restricted in whom it can help. And then uh, it must be as well for me, you know, if I'm part of the church, then I'm restricted of whom I can help. And that's of, that, of course, is not the case. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at it here. God is pleased um, with us when we have something to share. He's pleased. Hebrews 13, 6, for example, he says, uh, But do not forget to do good and to share. And then he says, For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So God is well pleased when we do, when we sacrifice of our sharing, of our abundance, and share with other people. That's speaking to us directly, you know, and, and, and he, he, you know, we can't, we learn, remember when we do 1 John chapter, we were studying 1 John, and chapter 3, verse 17, this is what, what John says. It says, but whoever has this world's goods, if you have the word, the world's good, and sees his brother in need, and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? How? If you see that somebody's in need, okay, hi, and you, but he goes in, in, in a little more detail later, and you say, you know, go well, I pray for you. But he's still hungry. He's still cold. He's still in the streets. I mean, that's, that's not, you know, John said that, how can the love of God be in that person, be in us, if we do that? We have to be really careful not to do that. So um, we must help. No, no doubt about it. We must help all that we can. Again, we can't be, we have to learn from Moses. Remember Moses, what he did. He took, he took too much on his shoulder. And he tried to do more than he, he was able to handle. We, individually, we all have a limit. So you do what you can. But we must do what we can to help whoever has needs, not only within ourselves, but outside, outside too, when we see somebody in need as well. Remember what, uh, when, when James, I say only orphans is only once in the New Testament, right? It's in James 1.27. He says, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. He says, 
to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. That's James 1, 27. That's pretty clear, right? But to visit when you're really, and I'm not going to do that because I said I was going to shorten my message, but when you go in that word to visit, that's not just, you know, that means personally going to that person and visiting. Not just sending a little check or sending this. There's a little more involved on that commandment to that. But like, we, like today we have an opportunity to give uh, to a mission. A couple of brothers in the Church of Christ that decided they were going to help. They saw something. They went actually. This happens just in short. Because the brothers went to adopt a kid from Russia. And if you go to their page you'll see. But when they went to get that girl from Russia. The conditions of the place they went to get that girl. They said it was colder inside than it was outside. And this was, these were babies. Babies. So when they saw that, they said, we have to do something. And that's, it was on their heart. Remember what I said, when you have a talent, whatever's in your heart burning, go for it. Do it. So they saw it, they felt it in their heart to do something. And they started talking to other people and they got together a nonprofit. And now they're doing great things. And you'll see some of them. And the website shows you all the houses that they help. And they give you pictures, updates, and all this other stuff. Real nice stuff. But, you know, we, we have... We have that opportunity to help not only the orphans, but if we know any widows and so forth. You know, and it's not just the church's problem. It is, it is our responsibility. It's, our, it's, it's God's command to you and I, to us. Definitely, most definitely. So uh, we know that even if we're forced, can you believe that? Even if we're forced, we should generously help others. And that's in Matthew. If you want to, if you want to confirm what I'm saying, read Matthew chapter 5. Verse 38 and 42 to 42, you know, uh, even our enemies, our enemies should, uh, um, should be helped. We learned that if you go to Proverbs 25, you can see that if your enemy is hungry, give him, give him bread uh, to eat. And if he's thirsty, give him water to drink. For so you will heap coals of fire in, on his head. And the Lord will reward you. He will. Definitely. And, and, and that's, you know... Give to the poor, even, even we are supposed to, even if it means that we, we have to put something, you know, of our comfort to the side. And we, we learned that. You can go in uh, Acts chapter 20 and, and find out what they did there. Uh, God has helped us. And some of us have more than others, you know. Some of us have better jobs. I don't know. Everybody's doing differently, if you will. Not everybody's doing the same way. So some people, like I said, you, you help according to your means. Uh, you, you know how much you can help and so forth. But pe uh, Paul told Timothy, remember in 1 Timothy 6, 18, he says, talking to the rich people, let them do good and that they be rich in good works, ready to give and willing to share. He's talking to the rich people within their, their midst. So we must share of our, our, out of our abundance. I mean, in God, like I said, God will. This is a promise. And uh, we're not doing it for this. Or if when we do share, when we do, we do it out of our heart, out of our love that we have for God. Because we know who we were before God helped us in Christ. I mean, that's, that was going to be a, another route that I was going to go this morning. But when you really think about who you were before Christ, you know. But God promised that He will reward you in like kind. Uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Look at this. It says, Give and it will, it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, over will be put in your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So this is some of the promises. When we give to the poor, we will not lack. Let's listen to Proverbs chapter 28, and verse 27. He who gives to the poor will not lack, but he who hides his eyes will have many curses. And, and, and you know, if, if we choose to ignore the poor, which unfortunately sometimes I've done it, and I've, because of what I said in the beginning, you, you know, you see something and you wonder and you, you doubt and so forth, you know, we might have to get better at that, of course. Uh, but if we, if we ignore the poor, when, then when we are in need, we'll find probably a similar response 
uh, from God. And listen to Proverbs. I'm not making this up again. Proverbs 21, verse 13, he says, Whoever shuts his ears to the cry of the poor will also cry himself and not be heard. So this is some, uh, something serious. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1 through 2 says that, it says, this is uh, King Solomon, he says, Cast your bread upon the waters, for you, for you will find it after many days. He says, Give a serving to seven and also to eight, for you don't know what evil will be on the earth. So the same people that you're helping today might be the same people that help you tomorrow. So we have to keep that in our minds as well. You know, and like I said, we'll close in right now because I said I was going to quote a short only five minutes. I think that's what we need for the video. But we, when we think about what we were when, when we didn't have Christ, we were fatherless. We were without God. We were without hope in this world. Especially when we find out in the condition that we are, in the condition that sins puts us before our Creator. So this morning, if you are here and you haven't obeyed the gospel of Christ, we have that opportunity to become adopted. Paul says in Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and 2, we can be adopted in the spiritual sense. Okay, These kids that we're helping today, they, they can't help it. We can help them. Just like God help us in our spiritual sense, He'll bless us with all spiritual blessings if we obey His Word. Christ came to this world, of course, and died for our sins. And that's how we have the hope of eternal life. So if you're here today, if you're watching this, if you want to become a Christian, the Bible says that he who believes in the Son of God and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe, unfortunately, will be condemned. That's in Mark chapter 16 and verse 16, 15 and 16. So if this morning you want to obey the gospel by believing, by repenting of your sins, by confessing Christ before men so he can confess you before the Father, and of course by being baptized for the, for the remissions of your sins, you can do that today. Today is the day of salvation. If you are in Christ and you want our prayers, if you want anything that will fall in short that you want to make known or you want to do it privately, approach someone and have that person pray for you. We're here for that. So let us do that. Respond. If you want to respond this morning, you can do that as together we stand and sing.